Welcome to a Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild Part 7 Making a cylinder gasket and painting the base And by base I mean the base of the cylinder and the main base of the engine At this moment in time as you see this The base of the cylinder has only been painted in etch primer And before I paint the base with some black enamel paint I'm going to make a gasket Normal procedure, press the component down onto an ink pad and make sure you get a very good coverage of ink on your component. The next step is to press the cylinder firmly onto a piece of gasket material, which is not exactly perfect, but it's good enough. It gives me a shape to cut out and shows the positions of the bolt holes. It's a good idea first though to wipe the ink off the cylinder. Later on I will wipe off the ink from the gasket material, but not just yet. The first thing to do is to cut out the center. I find it's best to do it this way because if I cut out the gasket on the outside first I'll end up with a very small part that may rip as I'm cutting it. Whereas when it's all fully together on the sheet it's quite stable and I can put a lot of pressure on to cut out the centre. Needless to say don't cut yourself when you do this and this is another reason for leaving the part intact on a sheet because you can keep your hand well away from the knife blade. The next part of the job once I cut out the centre is just to punch out the hole positions followed by cutting the outer part of the gasket. Normally I would use a very old pair of scissors to cut out parts like this. I don't much like the modern plastic ones because they usually break. These scissors really are quite ancient but they cut out the gasket perfectly. Normally I wouldn't bother too much about cutting the outside part of a gasket because you can trim it off once everything has been bolted in position using a craft knife but on a beam engine you can't really do this successfully with the cylinder being mounted to a painted mounting plate if you try to trim the gasket you will mark the paint on the mounting plate itself and to compensate for this I'm just undercutting the gasket all the way around very slightly now the gasket is complete I'm wiping off the ink simple and logical but quite easy to forget when you're actually doing the job I've also cut around the steam inlet port, but I don't need to do that, it would have worked perfectly well with the gasket in one piece. And now when I sit the cylinder on top of the bed plate, you will see that it's quite a good fit, without any gasket sticking out beyond the cylinder. I think though I can get it slightly better than this, so one more time, I'm just undercutting it slightly more, particularly on the straight part, and I'm also getting the shape right where it goes from being round to being square. I'm being a bit picky on this because a large upright cylinder on a beam engine is very much the focal point and everyone would notice, oh look, the gasket's too big and it's sticking out a bit. So to prevent that, that's why I'm undercutting the gasket. And I think this should look okay. Once it's got oil on it, it will soak into the gasket and it will become invisible. The white line will disappear. And in this clip, I'm taking the finest of fine cuts along the flat part. And I think that should do it. When this is all bolted in place, it won't leak and everything will be fine. The sun will come out, hopefully it will stop raining and the birds will start singing. Just to digress for a moment, I would really like to thank a viewer who sent me a present which arrived today. Occasionally viewers send me things that are very useful, sometimes they're not so useful, they're just really good. And the t-shirt that was sent to me by a viewer, and he knows who he is, is really good. It has a picture of a synthesizer on the front a special patch code synthesizer and I will wear that a lot of the time but as it's such a nice t-shirt I'm not wearing it while I do this job I'm painting the base of the cylinder and I'm painting it using HMG enamel paint HMG paint is really good stuff I first found out about it when I worked at the steam workshop it's a spray enamel and it's really durable very easy to apply and you get a good finish well, provided you don't put too much on. Any paint will run if you put too much on. But this HMG paint seems to flow together very well. In a very similar way to Phoenix Precision Paints, I use that also very frequently. You paint it with a brush and you can see the brush marks and then you leave it and come back the next day. All the brush marks have disappeared and you get a great finish. But as you can see, I'm not brushing this part, I'm spraying it. Why am I spraying it? Well, it's just quicker really. Just have a look at this for a comparison. This is the base as I received it with the engine sat on top of it, where it had been brazed and not really cleaned up and brush painted. This is a clip from a previous episode, but look at it now. I know it's the other way around, but it's the same at both sides. It is, in my opinion, looking much better. 
and this is just the first coat of paint. After this has thoroughly dried I will rub it down and give it another coat, maybe two. As usual I have the part on a couple of pieces of wood to make it very easy to rotate the part without touching it. This paint dries fairly quickly, it's not like cellulose which dries very quickly. This HMG paint is really good to use, and it smells quite nice too, if you like that sort of thing. I still do like Phoenix Precision paints, and I like to spray Phoenix Precision paints, but I buy it in tins. So sometimes I take it to a company called Auto Paint Northern, who take the contents of the tin and put it in an aerosol. The paint on the rest of the beam engine, and I haven't decided what colour it's going to be yet, is going to be brush painted with a very small paint brush using Phoenix Precision paints. And that's because very small paint brushes leave very small brush marks. For the moment I'm going to leave this to dry for a couple of days. I'm now dismantling the beam, I'm just about to take the Watts parallel motion off it. I've already removed the connecting rod at the other end and I'm now left with a green beam. A mammoth green beam to be exact. Whatever happens, whichever colour I paint it, it will not be this colour. And I won't put it on quite so thick like this, as you can see it's all cracked up. So it's into a plastic tub with some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as you call it in the USA, to remove the paint. I'm just putting enough of this stuff in the tub to cover the beam. And because of the pungent smell you get from this stuff, I will put it in the outer part of the workshop, but I have a problem. The plastic tub is cracked and it's leaking, so I put the tub inside another tub, and that was a really smart idea because that was cracked as well. But never mind, at least it gave me a special feature. By speeding up the video, I got this. Evaporating cellulose thinners on the workbench. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.